So I'm Phil Jacobs and today I'll be introducing Syntelex. We've just got um, about 10 slides to go through and then we'll be getting into the product itself and actually showcasing everything we're talking about. <clears throat> so firstly, unstructured data is currently a huge problem and that's only going to be growing as time moves forward. Already uh, unstructured data is growing at an incredibly fast rate, 62% and a very large proportion of data is currently unstructured and that will continue to grow as data rates increase and become a bigger and bigger problem. So the question of how companies analyze unstructured data is becoming of more and more interest. And our experience out in the marketplace is there's currently an awful lot of manual process involved. And that's not just in the data analysis itself, but the full end-to-end -end process. So there's lots of manual uh, work by people in the collection space and then all the way through to the analysis, searching, sorting and everything in between. And that's where Syntelex can come in and automate all those processes, free people up from the collection and the manual work side into actually performing analysis and producing end results for the business. So there's huge gains to be had by utilizing Syntelex within your organization. So, and how we actually deal with that problem is presented here in picture graphic form. So we see on the left hand side, we can take data from a huge range of sources. We can handle over 1500 different file types. <clears throat> we can crawl the web, that's fully configurable. So we can handle social media, we can handle the dark web, uh, take data from huge range of sources. That can all be brought in to Syntelex itself, processed, extracted, it can be imported and exported freely in open formats. And we also have out-of-the-box integrations with tools like IBM i2. For those that are familiar with IBM i2, we have integrations with the Analyst Notebook plugin, as well as integrations with all of the repositories available, allowing you to utilize unstructured data within i2. Once the data is in the system itself, we also present a range of views within uh, the web browser in our own interface that allow you to search, find data, and allow you to perform analysis. We can actually do network, timeline, and geospatial analysis all within the web browser, as well as presenting other tools to help you utilize your data. In terms of the speed of the tool, I quite like this statistic. We can process what would equate to 40 tons of paper on an eight-core machine per day. So Syntelex can be installed. Or it doesn't have to necessarily be on a hugely powerful server. You can start with a smaller machine. And as long as what you're processing and your expectations are suitable, that, that will work fine. Everything you're going to be seeing today is running on my laptop. I'm not connected to, it, to a server, and everything will indeed be live. But we can process... 30 pages of text per core per second, which equates to 2.6 million pages per core per day in terms of entity extraction. And then on top of that, we can also handle the entity resolution. So understanding which entities are actually the same person across many documents, we can handle that at a very high volume as well. On a test system that we have here to give some more context, which we built for around 2000 Australian dollars, we could process over 800,000 documents in under 40 minutes. So we're talking incredibly fast processing of data. And it comes back to what we were talking about a moment ago with the idea of people manually doing this work. The time that that would take is vast. In terms of scalability, there's no limitation in the hardware. Uh, there's, sorry, there's no limitation in the software. The only limitation is the underlying hardware. So as long as you keep scaling up the hardware underneath the tool, you can continue to ingest more and more data and the processing times will remain incredibly fast. So <clears throat> in terms of capabilities, we have a huge range of capabilities as I touched on earlier, and that's what's presented here. All of this we're going to see in the demonstration. Uh, so the key here is we have everything from the collection side of dealing with data through to the actual analysis and opening up the ability to configure the tool to the end user in a manner that doesn't necessarily require an expert. It's something that a non-technical person can be trained on and can very quickly get very good results. There's a huge range of extraction and capabilities that Syntelex comes with out the box. 
but it's all ability that you're able to take that and tailor it and extend it yourself for your organization. So in terms of our customers, we have a huge range of customers currently on a global level. We see a range of our resellers and partners on the left hand side and a range of our customers from across the globe on the, on the right hand side of the screen. I think what's particularly interesting when we look at the next slide around customers and we look at what these people are actually doing, we have some people that are using it for information and metadata extraction, and then we have some people that are using it for fully fledged intelligence analysis and fraud investigation. What I particularly like here is we see that we have um, everyone from uh, defense organizations through to toy companies using the tool. So it's very much been my experience and uh, the thoughts and views of the people I've showed the talk to that it's extremely useful for them in their organization, wherever they come from, because of that growing unstructured data problem. It's not limited to just one industry or one area. It's, it's across every industry. Everyone's got the problem of unstructured data and making sense of it and freeing up all that current manual work that's being done. So. As I mentioned earlier, we have a range of integrations with IBM i2, and that's everything from the analyst notebook chart plugin through to integrations with all of the repositories as well. And these are in active development, and we're in active communication with IBM on continuing to grow this capability. So that's enough slides. I want to move into the actual demonstration itself now because I think it's one thing for me to sit here and tell you that the product's great. It's far better for you to actually see it. So the key with the demo is that we're going to be seeing the out of the box power of Citilex. So before any configuration has been done, just it's been dropped onto your system, which can be done in a couple of minutes in terms of installation. And we'll see just throwing data at it as it comes, how much the tool can achieve and then we'll have a look at some customized and configured use cases as well to showcase that capability. So now I'm going to move into the software itself. And as I said, everything is running on my laptop. Now we're in the web browser itself within uh, in the Syntelex tool, and we can now begin to, to explore the capabilities. So what we'll be looking at here is the out of the box ingestion of data without any configuration. So if I installed Syntelex on, um, on my machine and then just open it straight up, logged in, this is what we would see and this is what we'd be able to do. So I've already created a project and to cover off the terminology, a project is effectively a store for data. To cover off the terminology that we're now seeing here a bit further, we see the idea of collections and we see the idea of networks. So a collection is a store for the raw data that you're putting into the system and a network is the structured view that Syntelex is creating to help you with analysis. And we're gonna see those come to life now, live through this demonstration. So <clears throat> firstly, I need to create a collection somewhere for my data to go. So I'm just going to create that and I'm going to imaginatively name it example. I now have that available to me and I can move into the collections interface. Once I'm within here, I'm presented with the collections view. We also see on the right hand side, the ontology. So everything that we see listed here in terms of entities and also links as I get a bit further down the scroll is what Syntelex can extract without any configuration. So all of these things will be able to pull out by Syntelex as it comes out the box. If you need more, you can, of course, extend it. So I've been presented with the Add Documents view. I'm going to select what we call the server library, which allows for bulk ingestion. So in this view, I can point Syntelex to a folder. It will descend through that folder and it will pull everything in. So I'm going to use a series of data related to 9-11 for this example. So I select that and I submit, and we see that the load has already begun. So while that's still ongoing, I can open up documents, I can view them, and I can explore them as that load is still taking place. So we see that in the time I was briefly uh, talking through that, already 115 documents have been loaded, and we can begin to look at what that's done. So we see that it's extracted people, 
And it's also understanding how those people are referred to, not just when they're referred to by their full name, but when they're referred to by their surname, when they're referred to by an anaphor, such as he or she. And it's collapsing all of those down into one person. So it's not just saying this is a person, it's saying this is a person and these are all the times that that person is referred to. So we see that this person in particular is referred to 12 times in a number of different ways and the system is able to understand that. We see that it's pulled out a link here that these these two people are our nephew, our nephews, so it's pulled out a relationship link in that case. We also see that we've got organizations, we've got locations, we've got monetary values and a range of other things, date times as well, that have also been extracted. We see that the locations have this little icon here. And what's that? what that's letting me know is I can hover over here and I can see a summary of all the geolocations. I can click that and I can actually bring up a map. And this is interactive. So as I, as I click that, it's going to move around the document and show me where that's referred to. So if you have a very large document, that can be quite useful to move around and understand the document further. And this map is also available in later views and we'll see further utilization of that later on in the demo. In addition to what's been extracted here, we also have the metadata on the document, which in this particular case is, is not a great deal, but sometimes that can be a very rich set of information which you can utilize. We also have the ability in this view to do manual additions to the document. So if we want to, we can click here, we can go into the document, we can change things. And we are, we have actually just recently built in capabilities for the system to learn from those additions or in fact those deletions. We have a range of tools available. So I can quickly click this, this list entities and we can see all the different types of entities that have been extracted and we can see that there are six people. And so this is the fused view. So we know actually who, who, what people are in this document very quickly and it can explore that. We also have the ability to download the original document. We can call external services and we can perform exports as well. So that's a very quick overview of what we've, what we've got in this view. There's, there's a lot more to it and that can be explored perhaps further later on or in later demos. So once we've got data into the system and we've got this view of the data, which does allow for us to perform an awful lot, we can also create the structured views as well. And that's where the network comes in. So if I move across to the network interface and I could have had this automatically created when I fed in the data, but I wanted to show this as additional steps so you could see them um, side by side. So if I select the data that I've just loaded in, and I hit create, it's now gonna take those 115 documents and fuse that into a structured view. And that's what we're looking at now. So we see that now we have a traditional structured view of that unstructured data. We've got entities, we've got links, and we've got a range of useful information exposed here. So I've just sorted by the tags and we can see that we're pulling out all of this information. Uh, so we've got things like um, uh, leaders, got members, military commander, agent, executive director. We've also got some key terms such as radical um, and various various other ones here. We also have access to the number of references within the data and the number of documents that that uh, entity, whatever that may be, is, is in. We can also drop any of these graphically onto our network graph within this view and we can explore that. So I've dropped this some of this data onto the view here. We can see that this person was an informant from Scotland Yard. If I middle click that with my mouse, it's going to bring up where that information actually come from. It's going to present me that document in this view and I can perform further analysis. We, and any, any documents can be presented for anything that you're exploring in this view. It's worth noting. We also have a range of analysis tools within this view as well, which we'll be exploring in later demos. So what we've seen here is a very quick, but end-to-end -end demonstration of Syntelex out the box, taking data, extracting it, and presenting it to you within a analysis ready view. And we did that within a couple of minutes. So a fantastic demonstration of how quickly Syntelex can be dropped into your organization and delivering value immediately. 
<clears throat> what we'll be looking at now to further extend this idea is the search capabilities. So as well as what we've seen in that view, we're now going to look at search because this brings us a range of additional capabilities, again, out of the box that we can use to find data of interest, to discover things that we didn't know, or to pinpoint the documents of most interest to us. So that's what I'll be stepping into now. In order to do that, I'm going to step into the search interface and I'm going to select a, a project that I'm familiar with in order to demonstrate some of these search queries. So now we'll be seeing the this this the search interface. So behind this demonstration is a series of data related to the September 11th attack. I'm now going to be performing searches across that to, to demonstrate what, what we can do with search in Syntelex. So firstly, I've just done a search with uh, this being completely blank and it's returned all the documents within the, within the collection that I'm currently searching. So searches can be done across, uh, by default, the system shows me just what is within this project, but I can tick this box and I will see all the data in the system. It gives me the ability to search across everything if, if, I, if I want to. But typically, projects are used to section out data, so it's very useful to only see the data related to the project I'm currently in. It just makes things a bit cleaner, a bit more simple, and I can work with what I'm most likely wanting to be work with, working with. So I've done the search across everything. This is all the data. I can click the cluster search results here and the tool is going to go across this information and find things in common across these documents. So we've got Osama bin Laden, New York Times, CIA, FBI, unsurprisingly, given we've got a set of data related to September 11th. And this is all interactive. So I can click here and these are all the documents that contain Osama bin Laden, for example. So this is a pretty useful piece of functionality to begin exploration of your data. To go into the search itself, this is our search interface, and if I click this option, we see I'm presented with the full range of search capabilities that we have. So we have text search, which is just the raw text. It doesn't have to be extracted. We have the text reference, which is extracted text and gives me additional functionality. So that's when things have been tagged, like people or organizations. We have document tags, so that's the idea that a tag can be applied to a document as a whole. And that can be done on ingestion, it can be done uh, manually as well and automatically by the system. We can search on metadata, we can search on date times, we can look for similar documents, we can look for a particular document with its ID. And then finally, ha we have this idea of network node reference. So we were just looking at a network and that is a fused view of data. What the network node reference allows you to do is take the ID of an individual and then search across your data. So that means if you've got lots of people called Philip Jacobs, you can look for the one Philip Jacobs that you're interested in and build up a complex query that relates just to them as an individual, rather than just everyone named by the same name. We can also stack queries up and add as many of these as we want. So I'm going to start with the, the text search. So I type in here, uh, bomb star, and that's going to give me bomb, bombings, bombs, all of those kind of things. I can view my results in context. I can also pull up the full document and I can click here and that will move me to where that search term was found. I can stack up additional terms. So if I add, come in here and I add uh, terror start, that's now going to find me documents that contain bombings and terror. We can see that like so. And again, I can bring up the full document if I want. We can also make these negative. So we see there now I'm seeing when documents contain some form of bomb, but not terror in any format. We can also pull on dictionaries. So in the tool, you can create a list of words, which you can then use in search. So if I select weapons, which is a list of weapons, I can then do a search for all of the weapons that I've specified in that view. We also have synonym capabilities uh, and a whole range of other capabilities exposed in this interface. We've got a very fully featured help page, which gives all of the complex queries that you can do. Moving along, we'll have a quick look at the text reference. So we see here that it defaults to a tag of person, but I can select any others. 
I can run that search and it's returning all the people within the documents in my data. And we see that there's some people called uh, Ali here. So if I add in Ali in the keywords piece, that's going to return me all of the people which contain that within their name. But more interestingly, I can add in a context query. So I can say I want to find all of the people that are mentioned with Bob, for example. And so we see here, this is then brought up all the people that are mentioned in the context of Bob. So you can very quickly find what you're interested in. We can also continue to stack up these context queries and we have additional functionality in this view as well. So we can specify ref like so. So if we say ref said, we're going to look for when someone made a statement. So <clears throat> with this kind of capability, again, it's really minimizing the manual work that someone has to do. It's really speeding this up so you can very quickly within your organization find the data that you're interested in and utilize it. There's lots of really complex queries just scratching the surface. All of these queries are saved in favorites and they can also become alerts. So you can be alert, alerted when new data comes into the system. So there's a huge range of capability uh, available within this view and outside it, utilizing it as well. We also see that we can copy all the data into its own collection. We can also create a structured view of our search results and we can actually download the documents themselves. So very quickly delivering value through the search. So that's a very quick overview of the core capabilities of search. And there's a lot more to see that will be available in a later video demonstration that will focus purely on search. So, right. What we're going to do now, continuing the theme of out of the box capability, we're going to look at our harvester, which is our web crawler. So I'm now in the Harvest uh, view itself, which as I mentioned is our web crawler, and I'm just creating a collection for the data to go into. So the Harvester allows you to collect data from the web. It's also fully configurable. So you can give it a Google search term. It will go to Google. It's by default, it will collect the first page of results and it will pull those in. But you can also point it to web pages and have it configured to interact with the page and extract as you require. So what we're going to see live is a harvest where it will go to Google and pull out results. And then we're going to take a look at the outputs of um, configured harvests, such as Facebook or indeed the dark web. So what we see here is I'm adding ISIS to the harvest queue. So it's detected that I didn't specify a, a certain site. So it's going to perform a Google query. I can then hit batch harvest and it will go off and it will begin that search. So it's gone to Google. It's then going to grab the first page of results and then it will begin descending through those pages, interacting with the pages as the rule set specify and extracting the data back into Centelex. If there's any things like PDFs attached, those will actually be pulled down and sent to Centelex for normal ingestion. So we can see here it moving through the pages and we can see that it's being highlighted and extracted. There's weights configured within the system to make it less obvious that it's a machine, but the harvester interacts with Google or any other site exactly as a human would. So there's no signature that it's a, that it's a machine per se and anything in place that you're currently using to do any web crawling or manual that searching of information would be just as valid for obscuring where the searches or the accessing of the page is coming from. So we can see that progressing through, and it's mo most of the way through now. But I and it'll take a, another couple of moments to to finish. We see it's already gone through quite a number of pages. But I do already actually have the end result of this harvest, so we can go and we can take a look at that. So I'll give I'll pause this. And what we're going to do is we're going to step back into that network view. So rather than looking at the raw data that's come from a harvest, we're going to have a look at the structured view. And again, this is with no configuration. So I come into here and we see this is the end result of an ISIS harvest and it's a, it's a structured view within the network. So we've got 
nearly 250 people with a range of key terms. And we've also got uh, a range of other things as well. So we've got organizations, we've got locations, we've got uh, a range of links like relationships. And again, all of this can be explored. So we can actually go to around the third page before we begin to lose tags. Uh, we see that some of these people here are journalists and we can get key terms of beheadings. So it, it, again, these, these key terms can be extremely interesting. We also see here that uh, we pulled out a former porn star, uh, as it is indeed an internet search. And already from the key terms, we can see why they might be there. But if I click this button here, we can go to the document and we can see that ISIS threatened to behead her. So it's actually quite a nice example of how quickly you can go from uh, a query as to why that person is in your data to understanding why they're there. So again, as I said, this is the output of a out-of-the-box harvest. What we're going to look at now is the output from configured harvests. So firstly, we'll look at the output from where the harvester has been configured for Facebook. So if I go into this network here and if I select a Facebook analysis view, we see that we can very quickly display all of the public data on the people that we've collected. So all the data here that we're seeing is what was publicly available on the profile. We've got their from, their lives in, their current job, current employer, previous employer, school, spouse, as well as their role in the harvest because we're not just extracting entities such as people, we're also pulling out linkages as well. So we have friend links, we have job links, location links, mention links. So you can understand the interaction between these people. You can understand the flow of data. And again, all of this can be graphically explored as well. It can also be uh, explored on a timeline or indeed within I2 potentially as well. So a very rich set of data is able to be obtained when you configure the harvester. And configuring the harvester is a process of pulling in a site and clicking on, clicking on the page to tell the tool what you want done. Uh, telling the tool, I want you to follow this link, I want you to extract this like so. And then you also, once it's passed from the harvester to Syntelex, you have all the capabilities within Syntelex to further enhance the data and further uh, perform the uh, work that you need. So as well as this Facebook example, we also have a dark web example as well. So what we have here is the result of a, a quick harvest that we did on a, a dark web marketplace. I believe it was Dream Marketplace, where we configured the harvester to access uh, this market, dark web marketplace, perform a search for all the, user, uh, all the adverts offering sale of drugs to Australia, and then it's pulling in all of those usernames that we're offering drugs. So we see all of those here. We could have potentially pulled out more information. So we could have pulled out well, what drugs are they offering to sell for Australia? How much feedback do they have? You know, how prolific are they? How much have they sold? But this was just a very quick example. And this has given us a range of usernames that was, uh, on, was pre present on the dark web that we can now take and we can be looking, are these, available, are these being used on the open web, on places like Reddit, Twitter, things like that. So we can be exploring and building a further profile with further harvests targeted around particular individuals. So again, a very quick overview of, of the harvester and the capabilities there. But the key thing with the harvester is it, it takes that manual process of collecting data and completely automates it. They can be scheduled so they can run periodically and we've got a lot of uh, work in the pipeline on Harvester coming to make it to be able to handle the changes on page and further enhance what it, what it can do. So, are there any questions on the Harvester? Uh, no. Yeah, no problem. So what we've seen now at this point in the demonstration is we've seen a range of core out-of-the-box capabilities and then with the harvester we saw further out-of-the-box capabilities but we began to look at configured examples. So now we're going to move forward with that and look at examples where Syntelex has been tailored for particular use cases. So and the first one that we'll look at is the police fiend example. So I'm just going to access that now. So in this demonstration, we'll be looking at a 
police reports that have been extracted by Syntelex and further configuration has been done to tailor the tool for that area. So as well as being of interest to law enforcement, this is also of interest in general because it's showcasing how the tool can be configured for a specific use case and what that can achieve. So if we step into the police reports, we see that in the additional, we see that as well as the typical things that we would normally extract, such as people, organizations, we've got a range of new terms being extracted. So we have the idea of police officer, we have the idea of drug crimes, we have the, uh, a range of additional links coming in now as well. So if I click on this person here, we see, or oh, sorry, I mean this one here. So we see that there was a police action upon this person, for example, so a new link being extracted. We also see a range of additional things, descriptions. Uh, so if we click this person here, we see that they've had a police action on them. There's a person description they were described as a victim. A range of additional things that are now being pulled out by the system. And that can be achieved by simply adding lists and also creating scripts to pull out more complex things. So what we can do now is take a look at the structured data view and have a look at how things look there when you begin to tailor the system. I step into this network now and we see that we've got key terms of interest to, to law enforcement. So again, this can be configured. So we have was arrested, was interviewed, drug crime, all of these kind of pieces. We have a whole range more entities, things like drugs, firearms, these kind of things. We also have a range of additional links. So drug crime, crime location, crime address, police action, and a range of other entities. We can also now perform additional analysis because we've got more information. So if I select the first two people, we see that they both come across to the chart and we've got a link of that their husband and wife has automatically been displayed and I again can bring up the proof. But what I can also do is I can explore the data further. So if I, if I right click and I say I want to find the shortest path, I can disallow the links that are currently on the chart and I can see that they're both involved in drug dealing in this case. I can also select James Jones and I can say I want to see when he's had, uh, what person descriptions I have of him and we see those come back through like so. So seeing how we can build out the analysis and within the tool and explore the data. This is where I'll showcase the book integration. So now I will step into Analyst Notebook itself and we see that we've got the pane here that we've created. So we've got our own plugin within i2 that we can access Syntelex data from. So firstly, I need to log in and then I can explore the data. So firstly, I select the project that I want to explore and select the network to give me the structured data. And we see that we get this view where we get all of our nodes or all of our entities and all of our links. I can come down and I can select people. I can also uh, filter so I can find who I'm interested in. I can send them to the chart. They come through with the correct icons and then I can interact with them as if they were in an I2 repository. So I can do an expand and say, you know, what entities and links I'm interested in. That brings back the data and then I can analyze it within this view. So again, we see that uh, wife link that these two are married and we can right click that and we can show documents and that can bring that up. So we can perform analysis within this view with Syntelex complementing it and bringing the unstructured data into I2 allowing it to be utilized. We also have within this view as well as the network tab that we've seen where we can access the structured data and the document tab where we can view documents. We also have the collection tab where we can view documents and we can also drag and drop and add new documents into the system. Also, if I click a document there, I can bring it up here. I can right click and I can add an entity to the chart. So there's a range of ways that this plugin allows you to interact with the data. So that's in that, that example, we demonstrated both the configuration of Syntelex, how it can be begin to be tailored for different use cases, and we've also showcased our I2 integration in the form of the Analyst Notebook plugin. But as mentioned before, we also have integrations with 
all the I2 repositories, allowing for flexibility of how you utilize the data. Now we'll be going back into the interface and looking at some further examples of configured projects. So in this example, we'll be taking a look at a range of data that's actually military related about the Syria conflict. But what we're showcasing here is Syntelex's ability to extract data and then present you with summaries that can be further dug in to as required by the analyst. So you can have effectively multi-tiered analysis within the web browser. So you can have your high level overview for people that need it, but you can also have the low level access to the data and understanding of, of the relationships as required by certain analysts. So what we'll do is we'll jump into the structured view of data related to the Syria conflict. We'll select our armed groups and I'm going to sort them so I get the most mentioned ones at the top. And what we're seeing here is a summary so we're seeing ISIS and we're seeing their friendly relationships, their hostile relationships, their leadership and their belief. Now, of course, this is a military use case, but this would be just as valid for gangs. For example, it would be just as valid for hacker groups or insider threats or anything where you're interested in understanding a high level overview very quickly, but also having the capability to further dig into the data. So if I take ISIS, for example, and drop them onto the graph, we can see here that there's been clashes with the YPG, and I can click that, and the system will present me all the documents where that information has come from. So I've had that high-level overview and quick insight into the data, and then if required, I can dig down further, and I can understand where that's come from and perform further assessments. So again, speeding up access to data, speeding up understanding, and allowing for a range of users to utilize a system as required. Uh, now we'll be moving into the final example of the demonstration, which is showcasing the full end-to-end -end analysis within the web browser that Syntelex can provide. So just go back and open up this project. And again, this is a military uh, example, but it's just as applicable to a range of areas. So here we'll be seeing end-to-end -end analysis all within the web browser, network, timeline, and geospatial. And this is all related to a range of data about the Afghan conflict. So the data sets that we've got here is some Afghan war logs, which were obtained from WikiLeaks. They were all marked as unclassified. We've also scraped a range of BBC news reports related to the Afghan conflict. So we can compare these two and we can contrast and we can look at two different data sources, fuse that together and look at how those two pair up, look at the differences within that reporting. So we've taken all of that, those two different sources, we've fused it, we've created a configuration that extracts key events and we've also associated those with the dates that they happened and where they happened, but also what source that come from. So when we step into the network, we'll see the idea that we've got events which were reported in the media, but we've also got events that were reported from the war logs. And we can, we can quickly see the different sources they come from and perform our analysis. So I'm going to step into the, into the network and we see our event indicators of interest. So we've got things like kill, attack, damage, wound, destroy, bomb, these kind of things. But these could be any events that you're interested in that you can associate with time or associate with location. This is just happens to be a military example. So I move into the timeline and I select my, my date times. Now these are just all the date times within, within my system. So that by itself is not terribly interesting, but what we can do is select our event indicators and put those on here as well. And we see, these are all of our event indicators, by the way. So it gives us the ability to, as a whole, understand all the events of interest, what's been happening. So we see we have a red. The red indicates that it comes from the war reports. We see that here, and we see that reflected on this graph. And the green indicates that it comes from the news reports. And likewise, that's reflected here as well. This view is completely interactive. So you can zoom in and out. You can create snapshots. You can filter for a particular time period that you're interested in. For example, we could say the last 24 hours or the last hour if this was a very up-to-date uh, feed of data. But 
it's useful to explore all of our event indicators in one go, but what I'm going to do now is drop down and look at just bombings. So we've got that situational overview of all of our events, but now we're going to dig into a particular one of interest. So I go back to my event indicator table and I send the bombings across. And now we see that we get this additional line here with, with all of our bombings, when they happen, when they occurred, and we get clusters based on, on, based on the zoom. So we see here that the largest cluster is 20. And if I right click that, it brings them up, all of these bombings, it tells us what type of link. So we can tell that these ones come from the news reports. And we can also see the dates that these are associated with. I can then click this button to send them across to the network graph, which brings them like so. so and very quickly looking at this, we can see most come from the, uh, the news reporting, but two come from the war reporting. I can then invert my selection and I can look for locations associated with those and locations come through and then much like we utilized the map before, we can utilize the map here. That brings these up and we can zoom in and we see that in that time period we've actually got quite a clear line across this uh, region where someone, it, it appears that there's been yeah, some kind of bombing run in that region. And this is all interactive, so I can click here and it brings up, it highlights on the graph where that come from, like so. We can also see that we've got um, military grid references that have been extracted here as well. So what we've done there is timeline, network, and geospatial analysis all in the browser. This chart can also be saved for, for other people to view or analyze at a later point. So really interesting capability that although this is a military context there's lots of different areas that, that that can be used anywhere where you have something of interest that can be related to time or locations or a subset of that that can all be utilized within this view so, any questions at this point um there are quite a few so for those who have asked questions we'll We'll come back to those at the end of the presentation. So we just got to, yeah. we'll continue on and finish the presentation. We will get to those questions. And if anyone's got any others, feel free to type them in. We'll answer those for you but, uh, yeah, after the presentation. Mm -hmm. right. So at this point, I'll give a quick demonstration of how you actually configure Syntelex and how easy that can be. So we'll take a look at what's behind the scenes of some of these configured projects that we've been looking at. So if I select the complex relationship analysis project that we looked at earlier that allowed us to showcase all of these uh, different uh, interactions, we'll step into the configuration just to see what was actually done there to achieve that. So I can go into the configuration view, and this is where you tailor everything in Syntelex. Everything is open to be um, tailored to your particular requirements. But the main two components that you use for configuring the extraction are the dictionaries and the scripts. So if I click on the dictionaries, we see that this project only has four dictionaries behind the scenes. And if we take a look at what those are, they're lists of words. So you can come into the configuration, you can create a list of words, and then set that as active within Syntelex. And as quick as that, you've got it tailored to your particular use case. For anything of further complexity, so when you have things that are finite, like weapons, for example, you know, you can quickly drop a list of weapons in, into a dictionary and you can have those being extracted. Where you have more complex examples where you're looking for patterns or you're creating links or you're, you're adding features to entities, that's where you would use what we call an entity extraction script. And if I have a look at that here, we can take a look at some of these, uh, an example of that that I have. So. The example I have here is to extract a registration, which admittedly you look at that and it's, it, it can be a bit confusing at first, but I'll show how that was created. So I'll enter an example of a UK registration, which is what this uh, script was created to extract, and we see that it is tagged as a reg. And what I did to create this is I used this tool here, which we call the text graph, and this is all what Syntelex is seeing behind the scenes. We can move through this text graph and we can look for something that gives us the pattern that we're interested in. So in the case of a UK registration, it's two letters, then it's two numbers, then it's three letters. And I see this piece here gives me that information. 
So all I did is I come into here and I clicked the underline of each piece that gives me this information and then I can just copy. So I just hit copy, I paste, I build up the script and then I just terminate with the um, tag that we see there to tell the system what to tag it with and that's the fundamentals of scripting.